Uh. Yeah, I see them in the street struggling, young, dumb, and thugging, give a fuck about nothing. Stuck at rock bottom, trying to come up on something. Pumping from sundown to sun. What's up, guys? You're just here. Welcome back to my channel. We're back with reaction to House of the Dragon. This is season two, episode three, The Burning Mill. And for a second there, I thought it actually said The Burning Mill. So it already shows where my mind is at, pretty much where it's always at. But at this point in the season, we've had a couple sneak attacks now from both sides. And I don't think we're going to be getting any more of those because the only ones going to be sneaking around moving forward are going to be the Hand of the King, Kristen Cole. And yes, I said the Hand of the King, Kristen Cole, and my girl, the Queen Regent, Allison, because I'm pretty sure both sides are just preparing for a full-fledged war at this point. But I'm just wondering, what is the Rogue Prince up to? Because he kind of just went off on his own last episode. I think he was going to Harrenhal, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But yes, we already know it's a pretty short season in only eight episodes and the episodes themselves are a little bit longer thank god so i think i'm not gonna waste any more time just jump right in check out this episode so if you guys look at my full reaction to the show link to my patreon is down in the description below now subscribe to the channel now is a very good time click that button down below smash like the water there with that said let's jump right in let's check it out let's go kind of recognize the emblem it's like Put a stag. The boundary stones. This is our land. It's Bracken land. Babe killer. What did you say? Your false queen Rhaenyra is a kinslayer. Word is God now. Your uncle declared for Aegon. Did he? Aegon Targaryen is no true king. Just as you a no true knight. You're both crazy. Oh, these guys are young too. They're pretty much like teenagers. We're gonna have a mini battle here. <laughs> Choose your side. You wouldn't dare. He dared. God damn, look at this. All the way back. Here's the basis of villains. RIP twins. I can't fault him for keeping his oath. Not those who sent him. They're coming for her neck, her head. Soon they will not even remember what it was that began the war in the first place. But it's easy enough, they usurped my throne. That's just one answer. This was always destined to happen. It takes hold of the reason it's forgotten. There may be another way. What you thinking? Alison Hightower. House Bracken took it upon themselves to attack the Blackwoods. We declared for the Pretender. Lord Samuel Blackwood himself is slain. Good. First blood in our name. The Blackwoods and the Brackens have feuded for centuries. This is nothing more than an excuse for them to indulge their ancient grudge. It's no true war. Call it what you will. I call it war. The question is, what are we going to do about it? The Riverlands are the key to the war. Harren Hall is the key to the Riverlands. I will ride out with those I can muster here, men I know, there it all. I trained. I will turn the Crown land houses who declare for an era to our cause. We will add their numbers to our own and then turn west. He's brash. I will the Brackens. Subdue the Riverlands and take Harrenhal. What say you, my king? This is what Aegon wants. And you'll take Aemond and Vagar. Vagar will remain here to defend the city. Mm. Good. And Alice. To war then. Fuck the king. I'm as fearsome as any of them. Okay. You still gotta stay back. You saved my life. What is the life of a queen worth these days? Mm. You wish to be rewarded. She just freed you. That was you paying her back. A place at your court. Are they always like this? Sea smoke. My late lord husband's dragon. He's grown restless of late. We cannot know why. He's still out Maybe there too. Really. I've decided to send Joffrey to ward with my cousin, Lady Jane Arran. No She's fucking Joffrey. For a dragon. Raina. I need you to be the mother to them that I cannot. 
That's a big ask right there. I mean, because she has a dragon. She is the queen, but still. Yo, badass shot here. Apparently so. He was just chilling. Like, here you go. It's yours now. I, Sir Simon Strong, Castellan of Harrenhal, pledge fealty to Rhaenyra of House Targaryen, first of her name. Supper is venison with black cabbage and peas. No red currant. He's gonna so let them live? Out. Easiest takeover ever. Make them eat it first. I've survived many a battle. I do not mean to be felled by poison peas. Yeah. <laughs> if you've not yet surmised, you are welcome here. And what of your lord, Laris Strong? He's a scourge upon this castle and this family. They know what he did. I do not think it's strange that his father perished by fire, and his son too. Here in this. Well, I was actually a good man. So no, you will find no loyalty to Laris Strong here, my prince. Your grace. I'd only assume that as constant. Only are reminded of the perilousness of. Check the yourself before you wreck yourself. Indeed. Lord Strong. Your Grace. There you go. If you are successful, well, when you are successful, what then? We march on King's Landing and take the throne. The throne? The throne! The Iron Throne! It's a big chair made of swords. Glad we're together, even briefly. So, Kristen. May I present my brother, Sir Gwen Hightower? Arrived last night from Elton. Brother! How exhilarating to arrive at court after three long months on the road to find my Lord Father unseated as hand of king. Sir Gwen has volunteered to accompany you into battle. Kristen's already done with them. We have a full compliment, Your Grace. Then you shall have a full one. May the seven guide you. Good night. And lead you not into shadow and death. That's all you get for now. And request that she grant her favor. That her Lord Commander may go into battle with her blessings. In his heart. In your grace. God damn. Can you make it any more obvious? The brother already knows. There has been no word from Prince Damon, your grace. Then we He's must doing his thing. the advantage we do have. And what is that? Gotta have faith. Dragons. If dragons begin fighting dragons, we invite our own destruction. Mm. Fear of it is in itself a weapon. The value of a sword is not within its scabbard. We will secure victory with armies, not with dragons alone. Yeah, I'm not feeling our council here. Besides Renice. This council would do well to remember that their queen wears the crown of my grandsire, Jaehaerys the Conciliator, the wisest of Targaryen kings whose reign outlasted every other. Even Aegon the Conqueror's. I cannot spare a fighting dragon, but I say what I can. Stormcloud and Tyraxes are small, but they will grow. Stormcloud and Tyraxes? And persuade of the urgency of our need. You will bear our hope for the future. Your grace. There you go. Not goodbye. Just see you later. But the way that they're ending it up, I feel like it's probably a goodbye for a lot of them. Hopefully it's not the last time she sees her kids though. I don't want that. There are rumors that the king readies himself to fly to war. I mean, that I think it would benefit all of us to prevent our king from being brutally slain by our enemies and his body parts scattered to beasts and his court come to ruin, which I'd agree. Yeah, that would be ideal. What's exquisite armor? I was given the conqueror's name and his crown, so I shall wear his armor to war. I fly to meet Sir Criston. Is he actually doing this? I mean, we know he's a young kid, he's kind of grieving. He actually did love his son. There are diverse rumors whispered in the streets of your city. 
One such is that your grace. This would still be pretty life. big to put himself out there. His courage and wisdom flies with them. Who spreads these lies? Much little. Tales take on a life of their own, my weeds, unless they are tended. Well, tend to them then. I should be glad of your talents. You honor me, your grace. Shall we escort you to the dragon pit? Little figure reincarnated. You could come out with us, my king. So Martin has a new squire that wants bedding in. He's never fucked a woman. But you're sworn to chastity now. <laughs> of course, your grace. <laughs> We're not taking it serious at all. Yes, your grace. Nice. I've had quite a day of it. Yeah? I'm not sure how much we're talking. A wet whistle works wonders. Mm. Yeah, my Gotta get drunk first. <laughs> there you go. Oh! Who <laughs> was your grandson? I think that was the one that was with King Aegon. They call him the Conciliator. I'm the son of Balon the Brave. Bastard brother to Prince Damon and the late King Viserys. I'll tell you who else doesn't have silver hair. The rightful heir to the Iron Throne, my nephew, Prince Viserys Valarian. Oh! Music stopped! All hail the king! All hail! Drinks for all! At the pleasure of the crown! Like Sorry, you two. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Aiming the fierce! <laughs> you have come so far. Once and, again. And yet you still lie with your very first. <laughs> Did you fuck her like a hound? <laughs> Just like when they were kids. <laughs> Goddamn Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. High Tower. Renera. Oh, Dragon? We're exposed. What? Cool. Get to the tree! Here we go. What a sight. Close. No, you're still surrounded by trees. Have you fucks never heard of a forest fire? What a great shot. I'm in your dead. They know we're abroad, they'll be hunting. We must move under the trees and by cover of dark starting tonight. And no fucking inns. Mm. Could you be certain it was cold from such a great height? It was not such a great height, Your Grace. You said not to engage. She so was on them. Loose the dragon's root coal out and burn him. I have heard your arguments. It's time to make a move. <laughs> oh, is it a ghost? She's back. Don't need to see that though. You will die in this place. Is this true? Don't answer that in the comments. No way. first before taking out the knife. Rhaenys has counseled me. She said she saw in you a wish to avert the worst of what may now come. So you've come to surrender then? I have come to see if we may uncover some path towards peace. My dragons are restless. They smell battle. 
But if you and I... We all do. We're on no terms now. When was your plan first laid? Was your ambition so key? He changed his mind, Rhaenyra. He changed his mind. Just look at right into her eyes. It has, it has like a constant scowl now. She's always like... <laughs> still hot, but... It's her so luck. He was weary. It's hard at times to understand. He said he was the prince that was promised to unite the realm. What? I desire peace as you do, but to the set. My father used those words. He spoke to you of the Song of Ice and Fire. It was all misunderstanding. It's a story. But now she it gets it. I put Egg on the Conqueror. I don't think it changes a damn thing, though. It's too late, Rhaenyra. Really. I think now they both officially know, or at least Renera knows, like she, she tried to go the peace route. Now I think she knows it's like, it's gotta be a full-fledged war. There's no going back from this. Like Allison just said it herself. It doesn't freaking matter what the truth is, even though they both now know the truth, what Viserys actually meant, what he said as his dying words, the song of ice and fire, it doesn't matter. Aegon the Conqueror, it's Allison's son. He's the king now. It's not like she could just go up to him like, hey, Aegon, son, uh, can I see that crown for a second? Yeah, we're going to give it to Rhaenyra, your sister. Yeah, your sister. Can I, can I get that crown from you? That's not going to happen. But before we go any further, all right, guys, that was House of the Dragon. Season 2, Episode 3, The Burning Mill, and this almost felt like a calm before the storm. I kind of predicted it last time around about this episode, that it's going to be more or less a setup episode for things to come, because I have heard before that Episode 4 is a big one. Probably going to be our first major battle of the season, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get one in the season finale also, but... Yeah, we know that Kristen and Allison's brother, I didn't even know that she had a brother. I'm sure that he was mentioned plenty of times before, but maybe because we just haven't seen him, I didn't even realize he actually exists. So he's here now. He just appeared out of the blue. I don't freaking know where he came from, but that's okay. He already has beef with Kristen. He probably already knows that Kristen is banging his sister, the Queen Regent, and yeah... They are off ready to war. That one scene too with the dragon swooping down on them, that was a fire scene, even though there wasn't any actual fire. I'm surprised. Well, I guess she just didn't want to sit and make a forest fire there, but she knew they were there hiding amongst the trees and she could just lit them up right then and there. They didn't have a dragon, but we know that Aemon, he's not too far behind. She was sent off as well, but I think they said that Vagar staying behind. I don't know if he's, he's he never listens anyway. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. I guess I wouldn't be surprised if Vagar ends up making an appearance. But we got some crazy shots this episode once again. Some cinematic shots also. That almost felt like a blockbuster. There are certain points of Game of Thrones where I said that, and honestly, I felt that same way about this episode. That one scene. I'll talk about it right right now. Right now, might as well. Where Damon actually took over Harrenhal. Uh, I was pretty sure that, that that they mentioned last time that that's where he was actually going, but they mentioned it very briefly, so it wasn't 100%, but easiest takeover ever. Like, if I was alive back in those times, that's a takeover. I could have taken over Aaron at all, like, that that quickly and that easily. He just walks, like, he didn't even need the dragon. He just walked in, swooped in, and they're just chilling there. He's like, yo, I'm here to take over Aaron at all. He's like, puts down his pea soup, kneels down, he's like, it's yours. <laughs> like, really? That's all it took? So, yeah, they're kind of against Laris as well. That's the other thing I want to mention about this episode being more or less a setup episode is both sides kind of got, they set up like the similar positions where King Aegon, he got Laris. I think that's how you say the name, Laris or Laris, his master of whispers. So he promoted him to that position. And then very much similar on the other side, Renera, where she kind of made a friend in the White Worm, last, I'm pretty sure the White Worm, last time around where she actually did speak up. I wasn't sure if she actually did come through in the, or not in the end, but thankfully it was proven here that she did actually speak up last time around. She's the reason why Sir Eric arrives there in time to save Renera's life. 
and she was promoted to a very similar position as well, very much like Lars was. So both sides making very similar moves. And that's pretty much what we've seen all season so far. From the first two episodes, they both did the sneak attack. And now this episode, they're both promoting very similar positions amongst the ranks. And now, next episode, like, there's no more peace talks. We've tried this. There's no more peace treaties. It's not going to happen. Now we're narrow nose. I'm surprised... Like, she even tried going this route. I guess she was like, all right, we both tried, like, taking a strike at each other, those sneak attacks. Now's the chance before the next attack comes that I guess I try to, like, declare my peace. And she actually found out the truth, too. But, like I said, it doesn't matter at this point, like, what the truth is. Because Allison is going to roll with it. And even if Allison did want to roll with it, like, because I already know, like, there's going to be enough people hating on Allison out there. They're going to put full blame on her. Like, oh, Allison could have stopped this. No, she couldn't have. Like, it doesn't freaking matter. Even if Allison was fully on board with Renera, wanted to fully make her queen now, it wouldn't matter. Like, like she said, everybody's too far gone. Like, try telling all the boys. Try telling Eamon. Try telling Chris Nicole. Try telling King... King Aegon, like, no, 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 call everything off, come, come back, we're just gonna have a, a, a truce talk, we're gonna make everything right, it's just not gonna happen, like, nobody's gonna listen to her past this point, so, yeah, war is ahead, our first battle of this war, at least, I think next episode, I'm not watching any previews or trailers or anything like that, but I'm fully expecting it to go down, and yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a major character killed, also, this episode, enough about the future battle, which I don't even know necessarily will or not go down, but I'm pretty sure it will. This episode also, like, King Aegon, I wasn't really sure where he was standing. Like, there's times where I'm thinking he really wants to prove himself as a proper king and as a rightful king, as a rightful heir to the throne. Like, the reason why he was actually given this position, why he is king. In this episode, like, you see, like, he actually noticed, like... The, his protectors, they weren't really taking shit serious. Like, they're supposed to be swearing an oath about, so I guess they're now celibate. And they were joking around. They're like, oh, yeah, king, we are celibate, all right. And then he looked at them like, you fuckers. No, I'm the king. Why, you're, why Even if you're not, why are you saying that to me? Like, you need to take this shit serious. Especially after he just lost his son because somebody wasn't taking their role very serious. <clears throat> Crush the coal, so... Well, he's taking Dallison very serious, but aside from Jaharis, nobody was watching him. So, yeah, I, I, I don't blame King Aegon for being like, yo, motherfuckers, step your game up. Like, take this more serious. And I was kind of expecting him to just take them out right then and there. And like, this is a new era. I, I'm King Aegon. I'm making sure everybody takes shit serious moving forward. So that was like a fork of the road right there for him where he could have gone that one route and could have started proving it. Might, might not have been the best route to go as king, but maybe people would have started taking him more serious if he just killed those, those folks right then and there. But instead, he went the opposite route where he actually took the belt on what they were saying. Like, yo, there's a new guy, a new guy in the guard. That he, he's never had sex before. Let's get a blade. So fast forward to that they're back at the bar and what was up with the one dude talking shit in the bar about being half targaryen like uh, i guarantee you that's something from the book there's probably i would be surprised if that's expanded on from the book and they just threw that in there but that kind of threw me for a loop i was like wait is this dude serious right now and then as soon as like he he shut up right away as soon as king aegon showed up in the bar and bought a round for the house so that's one way to win people over you kill off all the rat catchers last episode then hey you buy everybody a drink at the bar and everything's good this episode and then what he actually discovered in the brothel or the bathhouse afterwards was Eamon, who we saw last episode, was also chilling there as he's like curled up in a fetus. And one thing I never really noticed about that woman that he was with is apparently people were saying that she looks very similar to Allison. I kind of noticed that this episode definitely didn't pick up on it at first, I guess because she was never in that very motherly role for him. And we saw it last time around too, last episode where King Aegon, he was like breaking down and honestly that was kind of understandable whether you like Aegon or not at this point or at that point in the last episode, it doesn't matter. He just lost his son in brutal fashion, like he has full right to be breaking down like that. He actually, that was like one of the first times where he actually like showed human emotion, came off as like sympathetic and yet in that moment, Allison, she wouldn't fuck Kristen Cole, so... 
she's not really good in that motherly role. And we've seen it now with King Aegon, and it, I guess it's been proven that she was never really there for Aemon as well. And it was kind of awkward for Helena this episode too. They had a scene where Helena forgave her, and I guess that I think it was more or less showing. I wasn't really sure what that scene was about. I was gonna kind of ask you guys because. I don't know, I just got a weird vibe from that scene, and I think that's kind of what it is about, too, is just not really being there in the motherly role. And even though Helena forgives her, it was just awkward. So seeing Eamon in, the, in that bathhouse, in the brothel, like that, and it was also bringing him back to childhood once more because he was made fun of as a kid. He was always the one that was kind of made the butt of, the, of every joke and we saw with the pig when he was younger too like here's your dragon they put a wings on a pig and it was very much similar here of course it was in front of everyone too and yo they gave a full frontal shot i definitely can't show that on youtube so thanks hbo you made my job a lot easier for editing where i'm just gonna have to cut all that shit out but even if i end up cutting out that entire scene you guys know exactly what i'm talking about but yeah, more or less, I felt like this episode was just a setup episode. It wasn't bad by any means, like, going back to my Game of Thrones watch. Some people hated it whenever I mentioned it, like, yo, this was a setup episode. I don't, that isn't a bad thing. For, if you have more than half a brain, then you guys fully understand. But there were some people that watched through my watch of that where they got upset, right? Anytime I mentioned setup episode, they're like, how dare you, you're not paying attention. How dare you even call this a setup episode? But... This, I felt like, was a proper setup episode. It's not like nothing happened, but they're setting up things to come. That's what a setup episode is. So it wasn't bad by any means. It's just there wasn't too much action. That's really what it is, what it comes down to. But because of this episode, because of some chess moves being played, there was definitely moves on the board. On Like, hell, Damon took over hair and all. He completed his mission. And we know that the people there, they're against Lars because he turned on their family as well. So he's got some of the strongs, but I guess he's the cousin or niece or nephew or something like that, uncle, some, some sort of relation. Either way, he's got some strongs on his side. He now controls Herodol, another power position, now another power location that they can move on the map. We know that Eamon and Kristen Cole and... I, don't, I didn't get the name of Allison's brother, but they're on the move, and they're moving pretty closer. Renera, she tried to make a move in regards to a peace treaty, calling a truce. That's now off the board. Not going to happen. So there's a lot of things that had to be kind of like taken care of before we could get to the good stuff. So I guess that's one way of looking at it. But for some people, hell, hell they probably enjoy this just as much as the battle scenes as well. I definitely enjoy the moves being made, but I'm kind of glad that now that they've been made, now we can get to more of the good stuff. So next episode, I've heard, is a really big episode for this season. And I said at the start, too, this is a very short season, only eight episodes. So at this point, there is no more time for setup episodes. Like, every episode has got to be big. I'm fully expecting the next one to be a big one. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose a main character or two. I'm not expecting Damon to be lost. That's another thing I want to mention about Damon that I heard about this season. Apparently some people were worried about this season for him because I guess in terms of the story or the book that he kind of takes like a backseat role at this point and then he plays like a larger point uh, part later. So I'm fully not expecting him to die by any means, but there was a bit of foreshadowing this episode too. Like you're going to die here. So we shall see. I'm not expecting it to play out this season though. I am expecting Kristen Cole to die this season. If he doesn't in the finale, I'm, Probably going to be a little bit upset because he's riding a high right now. It's only a matter of time before that steep fall. But Eamon, I don't know. He seems like a power player too. I feel like at some point we're going to get Eamon versus Damon. We got to get that. I don't know if it plays out that way in the books, but I feel like it's inevitable. It's got to happen at some point. That's another thing. I'll be super disappointed. It doesn't have necessarily have to happen this season. But before the series is over, I want to see that play out. Two dragons and two foes, yo. They're both killers. I want to see that. They're both very similar, too. Not just the hair, but this is just the style and, like, the savageness. So I definitely want to see that. I don't think we're going to lose either, either of the queens. We could, though. Maybe Allison. Hopefully not. I, I want to see more of her moving forward. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose King Aegon this season. Maybe. Are we? 
does Eamon ever become king? That'd be perfect time, but obviously he's got hair, but Jaharis was just taken out too. So, you know, there's so many different ways that this show could go, and I'm excited to see, and having no idea where it goes, I'm excited to see it all play out. So, yeah, I'm super hyped for the next episode. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are as well. But, yeah, that's just about it for me, guys. So, as always, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys can like, subscribe. really helps my channel grow. Till next time, I am out. Enjoy your night. Peace. Well, I didn't smoke enough for you. Didn't drink enough for you. Wasn't fun enough for you. Wasn't good enough for you, Dan. You played me like a yo-yo and shit.